Hey, how's it going everyone? I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Now, today we're going to be talking about a new manga that literally just came out about a week ago, give or take, and that is Kowloon Generic Romance, and all I can say, this manga is everything but generic. Printed by Yen Press, this manga comes at a hefty price at $19.50 Canadian or 15 US dollars. I think that's a pretty hefty price for a manga that could probably go for uh, about 16, 17 Canadian dollars or like 12 or 13 U American dollars. Yeah, basically, I'm just going to be talking about this manga, get my thoughts on it. I re just read it yesterday. Basically, uh, this manga took everything from this first volume and then on the last couple pages completely just flipped it on its head. When I first heard of this manga from the homegirl HVL, she said that this manga is, has some mystery to it. I was like, that's kind of weird. You don't usually see a romance manga with some mystery, but after the ending of this volume, I can absolutely see where that mystery aspect came from. The world always felt so weird to me, so when that little twist happened, uh, my jaw literally fell on the floor. It, it, like, it, like, opened wide so fast when I read that final page. It blew my mind, uh... I'm gonna be completely honest, I really wasn't feeling this series for the first seven chapters. It felt like just kind of soppy, generic, bullshit romance, but, uh, like I said, the last chapter hit, a lot of weird things started to happen, and then the twist happened, and it was a wonderful, wonderful twist. It got me so unbelievably excited for the second volume. Now, I'm not gonna praise this too much, I'm not gonna forget the first seven chapters. They weren't that good. Um... If there is one thing to take away from this manga, and it is the female on the front. Now, if you're new to this channel, or know me, or don't know me at all, then let me tell you something. Short hair and glasses is my thing. On women, short hair especially is my thing. It doesn't matter if it's real life women, or <laughs> dude, <laughs> oh that sounds so sad. Or if it's women from manga, if you have short hair, you have my heart. And this manga is no different. A busty Japanese or Korean woman, actually, I think, or from Hong Kong. This is no different. She's bad as hell. She's super hot. There are some pretty raunchy scenes in this manga. Actually, speaking of raunchy, oh, I just left one. Uh, this manga is wrapped. It, it does have a parental advisory warning sticker, the bottom right of the volume. I can see why they wrapped it. I'll see if I can show a panel of why they kind of wrapped it. I don't know if I'll be able to show this, but uh, I can see why they wrapped it, but I don't think it absolutely necessarily had to be wrapped. I think there are a lot of manga out there that deserve to be wrapped more than this one. But other than that, uh, I always feel weird walking out of a store with wrapped manga. It feels kind of dirty, if you know what I mean. But other than that, let me tell you uh, the premise of this manga. I'll read it at the back for y'all. Welcome to Kowloon Walled City, a dystopian townscape where the people are brimmed with nostalgia and where the past, present, and future converge. Amid the hidden emotions and extraordinary daily lives of the men and women working in its confines, a tale of romance begins to unfold for real estate agent Reiko Kujirai, one that feels as familiar as Kowloon itself. As you can tell, it's no generic manga. They reference nostalgia a lot in this series. It is anything, everything but generic. This series is actually quite good. I did enjoy it a lot. Uh, this manga moves pretty fast with the romance aspect. Honestly, I really wasn't digging the romance. Uh, only because, here, I'll show a quick preview. Yeah, the main character's hot. <laughs> and other than that, Romance moved kind of fast. It felt kind of weird and misplaced. Uh, I like when characters kind of confess to their feelings uh, faster than regular bullshit romance shoujo mangas. Uh, I like it when they don't beat around the bush and get straight to the point. There's an other manga that I read that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed because they did that. They take no bullshit. Uh, they get straight to the point, and then there's a twist. Like, I see, there's a twist. I'm not gonna spoil the twist for you guys. You're gonna have to go out and buy this manga yourself or read it. It's just a solid manga. Now, there is one negative to this girl is that she smokes. I'm not a huge fan of women that smoke, but it's just a 2D character. It's just the fucking drawing. I should stop oogling over here. Her and move on. But I 
do have to say the art is pretty good, made by Yoon Miyazuki, the person that drew After the Rain, I believe is the manga. Uh, I've never read that manga, I've never really been interested in that manga, but hearing how good this volume was, I had to give it a shot, and it's not bad. The character designs, like I said, are very nice. The dude character, he's, uh, he looks pretty generic for a romance MC. If I were to compare him to anything, he looks a lot like the MC from Sweat and Soap. And his bold kind of nonchalant behavior is nothing new for romance and shoujo, you know, a super quiet girl to a very hyper and out there character. It's nothing special. So that's why I really didn't like the romance, but everything else about this manga I uh, did really enjoy. The scenery, the vibe this manga gave off is kind of like a dystopian but garbage-like um, future. I think was very well done. I think uh, it can do that kind of vibe very well. The next volume could either shit on everything this volume built up or take it to a 12 and just make this manga so much more fun than it actually was. I hope they improve because the first volume, like I said, it was decent. I gotta say, this spine for this manga is gorgeous. It's very elegant old-fashioned it's very well done i love the font they used on the kowloon and the generic romance part it's very professional if you know what i mean it's very well done i do enjoy it a lot but other than that it's decent i can't say too much about it it really didn't do much volume 2 is probably going to have a lot more content than volume 1 this was basically a massive build-up. It was to get you confused on what the fuck you're reading and, oh, it's just a shitty generic romance. You were going to get bored when you read this first volume. I was almost thinking of closing it and putting it away halfway through reading it. I remember saying to myself, damn, another miss, huh? And then I got to the last page and I'm like, okay, no, this is not a miss. This can actually be very well done if they do it right. Like I said, romance moves pretty fast. There's, they already kiss in this volume, which I don't really care about. Again, I don't really care about the chemistry between, between the two characters. I really only care about uh, what's coming in the next volume. But for now, it's interesting. I'm not too fixated on it yet. But probably after the second volume, I'm going to talk its praises if it does what I want it to do. And that is do what it said <laughs> or hinted to what it's doing well. But yeah, short little video on this manga. I'm definitely going to pick up the second volume. Look out for it. I love you guys. I hope you guys pick up this volume. If you do, give me your thoughts in the comments down below. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Take care.